Good morning. Welcome to this online service of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Arlington. Everyone is welcome here. No matter your beliefs or background, your means or abilities, your identity or heritage, you have a place here in this community. I would particularly like to welcome anyone who's joining us for the first time this morning or returning after a long absence. Thank you for being a part of this wonderful community. My name is Amy Kaguza, and I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of UUCA. I'm so glad that you're here with us for today's service. Our theme this month is creativity, which is one of the reasons I wanted to offer today's greeting. It's also one of the reasons that I'm here in my living room instead of my customary Zoom perch in the dining room, so I could show off these beautiful paintings behind me. My mother-in-law is an artist, which means that I am lucky enough to live surrounded by beauty. I'm so grateful. It's funny, when I was a young adult, I wouldn't have thought of creativity as a spiritual pursuit. To be honest, I'm not sure I really thought about creativity much at all. I am a lawyer in my day job, a profession that is not exactly renowned for artistic discipline. But as I've crept into middle age, the act of creating has come to occupy a really central place in my emotional and spiritual life. So I was a little bit surprised to realize that I don't have a pithy, concise definition of creativity. I suppose it's not unlike the Supreme Court and pornography. I know it when I see it. Anyway, in preparation for this greeting, and like a good nerd, I did some research. It turns out that most ancient cultures didn't recognize the concept of creativity. Art was considered a form of discovery rather than creation. In fact, I was gobsmacked to learn that the term creativity only dates back to 1927. 1927. It's bananas. As a side note, I highly recommend the Wikipedia page on creativity. There is some really cool stuff in there. You can learn all about creativity's Judeo-Christian roots in the concept of divine creation. Unfortunately, I already tipped my hand that I am a lawyer and not a spiritual leader or an educator or a historian, which means that I won't drag you all down that particular rabbit hole with me. Although seriously, you should really look at it. It's very cool. That said, I can't wait to hear what Reverend Amanda has to say about the creative possibilities of our faith. If you're watching live this morning on YouTube or Facebook, leave a comment about your favorite creative pursuits. Maybe even a photo if you have one. I look forward to hearing about your creations. And please join us after today's service for our Zoom coffee hour. You can find the link in this morning's email or online in today's order of service. Enjoy and have a great day. I call us to worship this morning with the words of Wendell Berry. We clasp the hands of those that go before us and the hands of those who come after us. We enter a little circle of each other's arms and the larger circle of lovers whose hands are joined in a dance and the larger circle of all creatures passing in and out of life, all creatures who move also in a dance to a music so subtle and vast that no ear hears it, except in fragments. Come, let us worship together in the name of all that is holy. As we enter into sacred time, I invite you to join me in spirit in lighting our chalice. Perhaps you may wish to light a chalice candle at home so that you too may feel the physical warmth of our presence.
We gather together as a community of memory and hope to celebrate life and its infinite possibilities for love. We light this chalice as a symbol of the light within every human heart. May our individual sparks meet and merge, bringing both light and warmth to the world. There are a lot of things I have loved learning about UUCA since I started in August. One of them is the way that you do your chalice lighting in your Sunday school classes, starting from when you are pretty little in preschool. I knew part of that chalice lighting before I came to UUCA, but some of it is new to me. Maybe you remember it, Maybe you even do it at home sometimes, and so you can do it along with me right now. Together, you say, we are the church of the open mind, the loving heart, the helping hands, and the radiant spirit. I knew the open mind and the loving heart and the helping hands part before, but the radiant spirit is new to me. I like anything that lets me have jazz hands. Now, that chalice lighting, I think, is important because it helps children learn what kind of congregation we are, that we're a place where you can ask questions and where we love each other and ourselves and where we try to help each other and where we have fun, I hope. 
But it doesn't just say what kind of congregation UUCA is. I think that chalice lighting can actually tell us, all of us grown-ups too, about how we can be, especially when things are difficult. You may know that this has been a hard week in our country. Maybe you have talked with your grown-ups about it or even with your teachers in classes. Maybe you have noticed grown-ups feeling sad or angry. It's been a hard week a lot of weeks this year. And our chalice lighting can help us understand how to respond when things feel hard. Being part of a congregation, uh, a religious tradition of an open mind, means that we can ask questions. You can ask questions when you hear something on the news that you don't understand, or when you're wondering why your parents feel upset, you can ask them. They can help you to understand more. Or you can always ask me or your teachers in Sunday school. Together, we can look for the answers that help us understand what's happening around us. Knowing that we are a church of the loving heart, we can give hugs when people are sad. It helps us know that the response is often just to care about each other and to care about ourselves too, to ask for a hug if we need one or to hug our stuffed animal to say if we're feeling upset or worried, you can do that with your grown-ups too, or with your teachers, to say if you're having a hard time or feeling scared. We want to make sure that you know that you are safe, that our job is to keep you safe, and our job, all of us, is to love each other. Having helping hands means that once we understand a little bit more about what's going on and we make sure that we feel and are safe and our family is feeling loved and connected, that then we can go out and make change in the world, that we can figure out what is not working for everybody in our country and how we can make it so that the country and the world is fair, fair for all people no matter who they love or what color their skin is or where they grew up. We can make change. We can be part of it, even if we are children, even if we are grown-ups, even if we are grandparent age. All of us have a role to play in making the world better. And then there's the radiant spirit. I think that part reminds us that even when things are difficult, we can also have fun and laugh. We can find joy. In fact, I think it's really important to find joy. And children are sometimes the ones that can do it best of all, can remind their grown-ups to take a break, to stop watching the news or scrolling through Facebook. My kids remind me of that to play a game or go outside or maybe listen to music together. Sometimes we'll put on the Nintendo Switch and do Just Dance and just kind of shake it off. You can be a change agent, someone who makes change in the world and also in your own family. I am so glad to be part of a community with you where we learn together and we love together and we help together and we remember about joy together. We remember to make music with each other. We have a special music video for you that I hope you'll stay for right happening right now. It's kind of as though Laurel and Truman asked each other the question while they were stuck at home, how many musical instruments could we use in the same song? Maybe after watching it, you will be inspired to use many musical instruments to make a song in your own home as well. If you do, let us know about it. We'd love to see your video maybe check and make sure that you don't have a parent on a phone call first. 
all together, we can ask questions and love and help and be joyful. I'm glad to be doing that with you. Beloved friends, I surely believe we need places for joy together, places to remember about creativity and play and fun. I also believe we need places to grieve together. And this week has surely been one for grieving, both because of losses in our own community the deaths of Bill Peters, longtime UUCA administrator, and of Bill Piaz, longtime UUCA member. And also losses in our nation, experiences of violence and fear, sadness and anxiety. The words of my colleague, Caitlin Cotter Coilberg, helped me this week. I invite you into her litany with me and then into a time of prayer in our community. Your response in this litany is, we grieve together. As the news cycle brings us images of terror and heartbreak once again, we grieve together. As each of us faces into this new level of horror, we grieve together. As we remember other moments of pain, fear, and loss, we grieve together. Yearning for an end to violence and suffering, we grieve together, yearning for a true peace where all feel safe and whole. We grieve together, yearning for greater justice, compassion, and wisdom. We grieve together. In the shadow of violence, we remember we are all connected in love. We grieve together. In the shadow of violence, we recommit to working for a better world. We grieve together. In the shadow of violence, we find comfort and courage in each other. We grieve together. Friends, it is our grieving together, as much as our play and joy together, that help us to stay centered, to see clearly, to move forward toward justice and love. I invite you in this moment into a spirit of prayer and meditation to join me in prayer for our country, 
for our own community, for our own selves. Spirit of life and love, God of many names, be with us. Be with us in our grief. Be with us in our anger. Be with us in our sadness and in our worry. Be with us as we recommit to love together. Be with us as we recommit to justice. Be with us as we recommit to fighting racism everywhere it is found. Be with us as we love each other. Be with us as we hold each other in care. Be with us as we are joyful and sad. Be with us in all our hearts hold. And remind us, spirit of life, that we are with each other. I invite you in this time, friends, to add your prayers into the chat, to name who you are holding in your heart, what you are holding, to name your grief if it is grief for our nation or grief for your own life, to name your joy, to share with each other. Please know you can always reach us at pastoralcare at uucava.org. Or you can join one of our pastoral care drop-in sessions held every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. You can check the calendar for times and links. Come by if you want to simply say hello to a friendly face. Come by if you'd like to talk about how things are. We are here for each other. That is all we can be. And every day, by each other, we can mean one more. May we indeed find and build love together, imagining a love with more justice, more beauty, more of us. May it be so. Amen. Sometimes people will ask me about my call to ministry. Every minister has to have their call to ministry story ready. They drill it into you in seminary. And so, of course, I have mine. 
I'm not sure what people expect, where that call is supposed to arrive, maybe in the woods or on a pilgrimage somewhere. I suppose mine did come on a pilgrimage. I was in eighth grade, and I was part of the coming-of-age trip to Boston. There we were, not on Walden Pond, though we went there, or not outside Louisa May Alcott's house, though we went there, but actually in a bookstore. It was the bookstore of the Unitarian Universalist Association in their old headquarters. We had toured the association and spoken with the dignitaries of the time. And then we went down to the bookstore to see if there was something we might like to pick up. I remember looking around at the titles on the shelves and thinking, I'd like to spend my life thinking about these things. I'd like to spend my life reading these and understanding the answers in them. And so that evening, as we all settled into our dinner, I told my minister that I thought I wanted to be a minister when I grew up. She, now infamously, if you've heard this story before, suggested I make sure I couldn't do anything else first. I think it was a rough year. Turns out I couldn't do anything else, so here I am. I'm not sure when I saw those book titles in eighth grade that I realized how often my sermons, my planned sermons, would be disrupted by the events of the week. I learned to expect it, though, in seminary, when a preaching professor told us of the famous words of the theologian Karl Barth, that he preached every Sunday morning with the Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other. What he was saying is that all of the words and even the most holy of books for that theologian, perhaps the holy books were those that surrounded me in the UUA bookstore, even the words in the most holy of books must be tempered by the events of the day, must live in relationship with what is happening all around us. And so ministry, I have found, is much less about any answers that might have been found in those books and much more about trying to figure out what Unitarian Universalism tells us about the world around us, how it helps us to understand, to process, to act, how it comforts us, how it impels us and inspires us. Luckily, Unitarian Universalism is a tradition that has always invited us to ask questions. In fact, that was one of my very earliest experiences. As a perhaps fourth grader in a Unitarian Universalist Sunday school, I remember distinctly the experience of, of deciding as a student body that we didn't like the curriculum anymore and we were going to do something different with it. And so we asked our teachers and had a whole conversation, and they allowed us to create a new curriculum, one that we built. I learned later that actually <laughs> that was a curriculum, the one that invited the students to create it. And so I think that perhaps all of our imaginings of being pioneers in the religious movement were really... Uh, a setup by the Unitarian Universalist religious educators, a setup to invite us to ask questions, a setup to understand ourselves as the questioners, as the searchers, the seekers. As you may know, Unitarian Universalism has officially seven principles eight principles here at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Arlington and in other congregations around the country. 
The fourth of those principles invites us into a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. And indeed, that search is at the heart of Unitarian Universalism. I had a congregant tell me once that he hoped we would be a place where we could be spiritually creative. I just loved that phrase, to be spiritually creative. And that's it at the heart, isn't it? That Unitarian Universalism allows us, encourages us, teaches our children, exhorts our adults to learn, to wonder, to ask questions, and to seek the truth for ourselves. And it invites us to do that in community. Always, whenever I do one of those question sermons, you know, where you get to send me your questions and I try to come up with answers, always there is some question about the limits, the boundaries of Unitarian Universalism. Some question that asks, well, if we can search for truth and meaning, if we can believe anything we want to believe, can anybody be a Unitarian Universalist no matter what they think? I generally say the answer is no. There are boundaries in Unitarian Universalism. In fact, we find them in our first and seventh and eighth principles. We find them in the exhortation to the inherent worth of every person. Folks who have trouble believing that, folks who act as though that's not true, folks who, in fact, affirm that it isn't true, that not every person is equally worthy, well, those folks are going to have a hard time finding a home in Unitarian Universalism. And then our seventh principle reminds us that we are all connected, the interdependent web of life of which we are all a part. And our eighth principle invites us to build beloved community working against systemic racism. Those bookended principles create the boundaries of Unitarian Universalism. But how does that really show up? And how does it help us figure out who we are and how to respond in times of trouble? For friends, we are surely in times of trouble. And we have been. We have been in this country, not for four years, but more like for 400 years. We have been in this country built on both the promise of freedom and the reality of systemic racism. Built on an imagination both vast and very narrow. We'll have a chance next week in our service to explore what that might mean for us, to explore what imagination is needed of us now as we move into our future as a country, as a people, as justice makers. Today, I am interested in what Unitarian Universalism and especially what a Unitarian Universalist congregation offers us in these moments. Are we just left to figure things out for ourselves, to search for truth and meaning in the midst of turmoil? Or do our very boundaries support us in understanding our next steps? Does our community offer us the way forward? Perhaps it is not a surprise that I think the answer is yes. Indeed, that I think it is religious community we need most in this moment. 
as Adrienne Marie Brown calls it, communities of care that we might build around us. Now, of course, we can build those communities of care in many ways, and you may have multiple of them that you can draw on. In this congregation, we build it in a particular way. We build it through our beliefs and through the way we check those beliefs in relationship with each other. The way our beliefs are shaped not just by our own experiences, but by the experiences of our co-religionists, of our sibling Unitarian Universalists, of our beloved friends in this community and in the broader Unitarian Universalist community. Unitarian Universalism was imagined, was created in essentially, for our purposes, let's say the 19th century in America. There are roots in Eastern Europe and even as far back as the very beginning of Christianity. But for us, we'll just start in 19th century America. A particularly creative time for American religion So then again, when has American religion not been creative? Since colonialism, our story in America has been one both of dampening religion, indigenous religion, fighting against it, in fact, seeking to blot it out, and also one of religious creativity, of seeking freedom of religion, freedom of religious practice. Like so much in America, those two stories have come together. For Unitarian Universalists, that freedom of belief, the freedom to be a creedless religious tradition, one that doesn't say you have to believe and recite these creeds in order to be a member, that has been part of who we are from the very beginning. And that has meant that we have changed and shaped over time as well. That what the majority of Unitarian Universalists believed in the 19th century isn't really what the majority of Unitarian Universalists believe here in the 21st century, though some values have been core through that time. Even in my own lifetime, my own journey through Unitarian Universalism, What I believed I knew back in eighth grade, what I believed those books were telling me, is so different from what I understand to be true now. And it will change yet again. Now, I understand collective liberation to be at the heart of Unitarian Universalism's saving faith. The way that all of us need to get free together to see what that true freedom could look like for ourselves, for our movement, for our country. But I only understand collective liberation because of the experiences I have been able to hear from friends around me, from colleagues of color who have moved through the world differently than I, from men and women and non-binary folks, from children and adults. I have come to understand how Unitarian Universalism is at its heart, a faith that both invites us individually to search for truth and that is relational at its very center. As I prepared for this sermon, I invited folks from UUCA to share with me some of their own credos what they believed at their core. Here are a few of them. Lauren Parnell writes, I believe that the responsibility of my privilege is to spend it. Being a part of UUCA teaches me to be aware. The monthly covenant group packets help educate and inspire me. And being in community with fellow UUCAers energizes me gives me courage to uphold our shared values and provides role models of others who are living examples of service and wisdom. I believe. 
Martha Hallman Pranitsky says, I believe that our lives are intertwined and affect each other, sometimes for the better, sometimes to teach a lesson in the hard way. And with that belief in the golden rule that is canon in all religions in some form. Also, you do you, as long as you aren't hurting yourself or others. Amy Shepard says, this sounds snarky, but it's not. I believe, whatever, just be nice. We definitely don't have big answers, and within our family, we don't share all the same spiritual views, but we are interested in learning about the different beliefs humans have while following the golden rule. Victor Lucius Gaberman says, I have two short ones. You could be nicer, maybe not some other people, but definitely me. And the best way to start is to start. Planning to plan is not a plan. Between them, they remind me to be more aware of how I enter a situation and less afraid to initiate change. These credos, these beliefs, and others that people share, they have at their core that relationality. I was struck by the way that none of the beliefs shared by UUCA folks were just about the individual, about my place in the world or how the world connects to me. Every one of them was about how we are with each other. And that, to me, is the ultimate boundary of Unitarian Universalism, that what we believe what we search for and seek and know to be true is always in relationship. That our creativity, our imagination is bounded by our community, ever expanding by our love by the feedback we receive from each other when we try out a belief, when we try out an action, and we notice and hear and learn how it affects another person. That relationality helps us when things are tough, too. This past Wednesday, as the news unfolded, the staff at UUCA looked at each other through Zoom screens and over text messages and said, we need to open a space for people to be. And you came. You came Wednesday night to our informal, impromptu gathering. You came Thursday to the joint vigil that we put together with other Unitarian Universalist congregations in the area. You reached out over email and you connected on Facebook. You knew in your bones that what we needed that night was each other. We need it too when we formulate those beliefs, even at the very beginning. One of the things that I have been so amazed by at UUCA are the Faith 360 classes. And my goodness, are you signing up for them in droves? In fact, in our virtual time, it is those classes and our covenant groups that folks are most clinging to, in which they find a way to be together. But of course, because we are Unitarian Universalists, our classes are not about learning the right way to be. They are about creating the questions together, imagining the answers with each other. Whether it's David McTaggart's spiritual direction class, a group spiritual direction experience, or the articulating your UU theology class, or even the class coming up on the ethics of the good place, we are wondering with each other, 
What do we believe? Who are we? What is the next right step that we might take? The books that surrounded me in eighth grade. I thought that I might have a life of reading and understanding the answers contained within them. It turned out I have a life of asking the questions together. Luckily, I was surrounded in my formative Unitarian Universalist years, not just by books, but by people, by the teachers who let us come up with a whole new curriculum, and by the music of Unitarian Universalism. I have a soft spot for the hymns that were popular when I was growing up. And we're about to hear one of those now. We laugh, we cry. A Unitarian Universalist hymn that simply says out loud what it is a religious community does. Who it is that we are together. Listen in that hymn for what may be my favorite phrase. We have found that even to question is an answer. Unitarian Universalism is no easy faith, not that any of them are. It tells us that the search for truth is ours, but it is not ours alone. As we stumble our way through the coming weeks, and months and years, I am so grateful that we will be doing it with each other, hand in hand, perhaps, heart to heart for sure, seeking questions, wondering about answers, course correcting along the way as our shared experiences teach us what is true.
Many of you will remember our former associate minister, Reverend Carlton Smith. Here he is lighting the chalice at a recent UU General Assembly. Now the particular form of chalice that he is lighting was adopted by the Unitarian Universalist Association in 1976 as a symbol of our faith. In this form, our familiar chalice lamp is enclosed within two overlapping circles. It is rich in symbolism. The chalice flame is our enduring beacon of hope, love, and justice, symbolic of the light within every human heart. And the two circles represent Unitarianism and Universalism, our two historical faith traditions that merged in 1961 to form the UUA. The circles also represent our beloved community, circles of people clasping hands, looking into one another's eyes, listening deeply and holding sacred communal space at our center. Recall Wendell Berry's poem that I recited earlier in my call to worship. We clasp the hands of those that go before us and the hands of those who come after we enter the little circle of each other's arms and the larger circle of lovers whose hands are joined in a dance. As I hold up my hands, I imagine myself holding your hand as we are joined in a dance, as we reach out through the shroud of virtual space. Looking deeper, Looking deeper, the symbolism of the two overlapping circles suggests pluralism and movement. We are not a static, inwardly bound, closed circle. Rather, we, op we are open to seek to enlarge our circle, welcoming and embracing all people. Further, the relative displacement of the two circles suggests to me that we are open to shifting theological positions. As in an imaginative, imaginative religion, we remain open to our personal evolving understandings of truth, open to revelation. I love it. I love being a part of this progressive, dynamic, and evolving religious movement, Unitarian Universalism. For this reason and many more, I am grateful to be able to give UUCA my financial support. I invite you to join me. We have many ways to give. You can mail a check to the church payable to UUCA with the word offering or pledge in the memo line. You can give online at the church website, uucava.org. Just click on the donate button at the top of the page. You can donate using the mobile app, Give Plus, or by PayPal or text. Look in our Connections newsletter for the links that work best for you. 
Please join me in dedicating our offering. Let us be grateful when we are able to give, for many do not have that privilege. Let us be grateful for those who share their gifts with us, for we are enriched by their giving. Let us be grateful even for our needs so that we may learn from the generosity of others. And so we commit our offering. And so we commit ourselves. David, thank you for that reminder of Unitarian Universalism the way it connects us with our siblings all around the country. Friends, this week, I hope for you that connection. I hope for you some answers, some next steps. And I hope for you the beautiful boundaries of love and justice that we create together. May you find that Unitarian Universalism and this community holds you and may you hold it along with us. Together, we build a new way. <laughs>